Hello friends. Today we are talking about polynomials. The word polynomials means many terms. We know they are classified into linear, quadratic, cubic and so on. Here the letters that we see have unknown values and they are called as variables. Here we have just one variable that is x. The numbers that we see before the variables are called coefficients or constants. The highest power for 3x plus 6 is 1. Therefore, it is a linear polynomial. The highest power here is 2. Therefore, it is a quadratic polynomial. And the highest power here is 3. Therefore, it is a cubic polynomial. Now, let's look at this linear polynomial. Everything here seems pretty sorted. Except for this value of x. We don't know what's the value of x. So, I'm going to substitute some random numbers here in place of x to see how this polynomial is actually affected. Let's say x is equal to 0. Then I will have p of 0 equal to 3 into 0 plus 6 which is equal to 6. Let's say x is equal to 2. p of 2 that is 12. Let's say x is equal to say minus 2, a negative number we've taken here, that is equal to 0. So do you see when we've taken different values for x, the values for this polynomial also change. This means the polynomial depends on the variable x here. So when the polynomial is equal to 0, the value of x at that point, that is minus 2, is mathematically called zero of a polynomial or root of a polynomial. So now we know that when we put the polynomial equal to zero, so let's say I take 3x plus 6 equal to zero. If I do this, I should be able to get this value of x as minus 2, right? It's just the reverse process. So let's check. In the same way, we can find zeros for any polynomial by equating it with 0. Let's find zeros for this quadratic polynomial. So actually what we've done is, we've got this in terms of linear polynomial. Now these are two linear polynomials. x plus 4 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0. So therefore x is equal to minus 4 or x is equal to plus 2. Same way, let's solve the cubic polynomial. So for cubic, we've got them down into three linear polynomials. So x is equal to 3, x is equal to minus root 2 or x is equal to plus root 2. The zeros of linear polynomial 3x plus 6 is minus 2. The zeros for quadratic polynomial x square plus 2x minus 8 is minus 4 and plus 2. And for this cubic polynomial, the zeros of the polynomial are 3 minus root 2 and plus root 2. By looking at this, we can say when we have a linear polynomial, degree 1, we can have one zero for polynomial. When we have degree 2 for quadratic polynomial, we can have up to two zeros of a polynomial. And when the degree is 3, we can have up to three zeros of a polynomial. So suppose instead of minus 4 and 2, the zeros of this quadratic polynomial were minus 4 and minus 4. We're just assuming. In that case, if both the zeros are of same value, they are considered only as one zero. So we could have lesser than two zeros for a quadratic polynomial, but not more than two zeros. Similarly, even for cubic, Suppose if the zeros that we got were 3, 3 and root 2, just assuming, then these two would be considered only as 1, 0 and this would be 1, 0. So then we can have only two zeros for a cubic polynomial. So there is a possibility that we could have lesser than three zeros for a cubic polynomial, but not more than three zeros. Now let's look here. We saw that the value of the polynomial depends on its variable. So in the same way, it will also depend on the coefficients because 
the variables and the coefficients are multiplied. So we can say there is a kind of relationship that exists between zeros of a polynomial or x and the coefficients of a polynomial. And what is that? When we were finding the zeros for this linear polynomial 3x plus 6, what we actually did was we got this variable in terms of its coefficients. If you take a close look, 6 is nothing but the constant term and 3 is nothing but the coefficient of x. The constant term is 6 and we've got minus 6. So it is minus of constant term upon coefficient of x. With the help of this relationship, we can just look at any linear polynomial given and state what are the zeros. So if we have any linear polynomial that is of the form ax plus b, the relation would be minus b upon a. So how do you find zeros for any linear polynomial? We'll first say what is a and what is b. Here 1 would be a and 4 would be b. So ax plus b form and the zeros would be minus b upon a. That is minus of 4 upon 1. So we've got the answer as minus 4. But for a linear polynomial, we could have only one zero. But when we have more than one zero for any polynomial, we could have different relations between the zeros and the coefficients and that we will see in the next session. Let's have a quick recap of what all we've studied so far. We know what is zero of a polynomial, how to find zero of a polynomial by equating it with zero and then factorizing it. Then we saw the relation between zeros and coefficients of a linear polynomial that is minus b upon a. Then we saw that a linear polynomial can have only one zero, a quadratic can have a maximum of two zeros and for cubic we could have a maximum of three zeros. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Do share it with your friends and post your comments. You can watch the entire syllabus of CBSC Math on our YouTube channel. Do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. Thank you for watching.